All right, Cartoon Network is doing nothing for me. Let's see what we have on offer here. Yeah, sure. I haven't seen this one before. Maybe it'll be good. A lonely horse camel thing in the rain. Well, this is depressing. If I've learned anything from Lion King and Fox and the Hound, I can't do depressing shit. Forget this. Even those who rule have to go to school now. Join Cusco and friends in the Emperor's new school. Hi there. Just wanted to welcome you to my show starring me, Cusco. So, no changey the channel, understand? No changey. Hey, this show is actually good. Wait, is this a sequel to that movie I have on VHS? I should go back and watch it properly. And that brings us to 2021 and The Emperor's New Groove, arguably one of the best animated Disney movies from the past 20 years. I went from disliking it to actually loving it. Let's talk about it, shall we? That miserable llama sitting in the rainy jungle? His name is Cusco. He has the ability to harness his inner Deadpool and break the fourth wall. He also happens to be the emperor of some Incan country, probably close to Michu Pachu if the TV series is anything to go by. Cusco also happens to be an egotistical, spoiled 18-year-old douchebag, perfect for royalty. He has servants, butlers, and a theme song guy. He's the hot shit. Just don't throw off his groove. I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the emperor's groove. Like old Disney royalty, he has a scary beyond all reason advisor named Yzma, who in turn has her own dipshit assistant, Kronk, as well as a secret lab underneath the palace. Cusco fires Yzma for whatever reason. Pretending to be Empress, I'm not sure. Either way, Yzma concocts a brilliant scheme for revenge. Cook a fancy dinner for Cusco, poison his drink, Cusco dies, Kronk disposes of the body, Yzma takes over the throne and becomes the female Jafar. Like I said. <laughs> All goes according to plan until Cusco drinks the poison. As it turns out, Yzma has a habit of mislabeling her potions, and instead of poisoning Cusco, she turns him into a llama. That night, Kronk smuggles Cusco out of the palace in a burlap sack. He plans to dump him over a giant waterfall, but has a change of heart, and ends up dropping the sack containing Cusco on someone's cart. Cusco eventually wakes up discovers his dilemma and realizes he has only one chance to make it back to the palace and become a human again. This guy, Pacha, the local village leader, whom he recently informed of his plans to demolish his house to make room for a massive swimming pool. Like we've established, Cusco's a dick. However, if they can make it to the palace, avoiding Yzma and Kronk as well as massive waterfalls, jaguars and a balloon-loving squirrel who can hold a grudge, who knows, maybe he'll change his tune and become a nicer emperor and a nicer person. Overall, is this going to be regarded as a classic? Probably not, but this is still the funniest and one of the best Disney movies of the 21st century, if not the best. The characters are likeable, the voice actors do a terrific job with them, and the plot may not be completely original, but it's still well written and entertaining. I give the movie a 4 out of 5, and it goes to number 28 in the rankings, ahead of Bad Day at Cat Rock, Muppet Christmas Carol and Adventures in Kettleland, and behind Christmas Looney Tunes, the George Carlin DVDs, and Percy and the Signal and other stories. Four years later, in 2005, this movie got a sort of sequel, Kronk's New Groove. This is another one of those mediocre sequels that no one remembers and no one needs to see. After the events of the first movie, Kronk has a job he loves, head chef at Mudka's Meat Hut, but he receives news of an upcoming visit from his father. Dad disapproves of Kronk's career choices and wants Kronk to get married, have kids, and have a house on the hill. 
Apparently that was all the vogue in the Enka days, and also apparently Kronk used to have all of those things, and cue a massive flashback that takes up the majority of the movie, where he gets involved with a scheme involving Izuma and a potion that supposedly makes people de-age, spoiler alert, it doesn't, and his time as a junior chipmunk counsellor at some camp where he works with some genetic love interest who never appears again after this movie. In case some people are wondering, Cusco is only in the movie as narrator and as a cameo in the last 15 minutes. He's so minor, you could forget he was even there. Bottom line, Patrick Warburton, John Goodman and Eartha Kitt once again do a great job as Kronk, Patch and Yzma, but this movie is nowhere near as good as the original, and beyond the introduction of Kronk's father, you're missing nothing by skipping this one. Which brings us back to The Emperor's New School, a two-season TV show that ran from 2006 to 2008. The concept is pretty simple, Cusco needs to complete high school before he can officially become Emperor. Apparently you need qualifications to run a country, who could have seen that coming? It's something that was never mentioned in the two movies, but whatever. If Cusco wants to return to the palace, he needs to pass all of his classes at Cusco Academy. If this sounds anything similar to Billy Madison, you're not alone there. It's basically the same concept. Lazy and entitled asswipe wants a top job, but he needs to learn responsibility, so he goes back to school to mature, learn lessons, make friends and gain qualifications, while there's an older character out to defeat him and gain the job themselves. So how is the show? It's average. Not great, but it has its moments. It carries over many of the characters and a few jokes from the original movie, namely Cusco breaking the fourth wall, Yzma having a secret lab that everyone knows about, a gag involving a monkey and a bug, and Yzma not labelling her potions correctly. The major difference here is that Yzma works as the principal of Cusco Academy, Principal MZ, an anagram for Yzma. And after the first movie, she's lowered her goals ever so slightly. Instead of wanting to straight up kill Cusco, now she's happy if Cusco simply fails a class, in which case she becomes Empress. The show never explores or explains the reason behind this, but that's how it works. The show isn't groundbreaking and is definitely unnecessary, but you could still enjoy it. Just don't expect much, certainly nothing on the level of the original movie. When it comes to the concept, I think Billy Madison pulled it off better. Maybe that's what the show was missing. Not once does Cusco say to one of his teachers, If your dog is lost, you don't look for an hour and then call it quits. You get your ass out there and you find that fucking dog! And that's The Emperor's New Groove. The first movie is great and the sequels are average and irrelevant. Next time, we look at something I haven't seen in over 20 years.